Well, we're going to talk uh, a little high school football because there are a lot of changes in different conferences uh, going on. And, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting to see what happens for the 2021 season and uh, also the 21-22 season. But we can at least, t we know that there were changes um, in the different conferences. And uh, where do we want to start off? Because there was a good amount of, of, of changes in each one of our conferences, really. And we can go above and beyond that if we want to. But, Ed, you want to start us off and, uh, and, and start off with, uh, what do you want to start off with, your Suburban League? Uh, no. I mean, wherever Sean wants to go with the PowerPoint, that's where we'll start. <laughs> that's true. Okay. Fancy, fancy. Well, let's first start off with uh, how we always start off our show, and that's the Greater Cleveland Conference. Josh, it's pretty clear that the Greater Cleveland Conference is shaping up in the next couple of years to be a pretty sparse-looking conference. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we're starting off with this year. And, and of course, Ed can chime in uh, with his experience in the league being uh, an assistant coach uh, for Brunswick. But, yeah, the big change coming this year, uh, as you can see, there is no Shaker Heights listed uh, for the 2020-2021 uh, season. Uh, they um, are moving on, um, but you're still going to have your big teams. Uh, basically broken up, you have really one far west side. Uh, and then you have uh, three uh, east side and then three kind of right in the middle with Solon, Medina, and Brunswick, uh, Illyria on the uh, far, the west side. And then you have Solon, uh, Euclid, and Menor uh, on the far east. So, it, you know, as we always talk about this, the conference, this conference is, is really spread out. Um, that may hurt them. Um, and that's maybe possibly why uh, you'll start to see some teams uh, kind of moving around. Um, but also, um, you know, competition level, especially for football, we're talking about football, you know, every year you have, um, men are, uh, at the top along with, uh, Solon, uh, Euclid has, uh, some good seasons as well. And then, you know, Brunswick, Strongsville, uh, Medina, um, those are kind of the, the middle tier, uh, over the past couple of years, uh, Strongsville's had, uh, some good runs. Uh, Medina's had some uh, good teams and, and Brunswick, of course, is, is rebuilding their program uh, to what it once was. You know, O'Leary has been having uh, a couple down years. Um, they're, have, they're struggling. Shaker Heights is the same thing. Um, they were the team every year. And, and just in terms of football now, I'm keeping this discussion because, you know, you could go at multiple other areas um, when you're talking about other sports. But Shaker always had good first few games they were in those they actually won a, a lot of their games and then once they got the conference uh, it was over for them uh, so they moved on um, and then looking in in the future and, and thanks again Sean for your PowerPoint presentation 2021 and 2022 uh, there's going to be some more changes uh, O'Leary is actually going to be leaving uh, the GCC as well uh, so that's going to lead to six teams uh, left in the conference and you know there has been some rumors some talk that other teams in this conference have try to move on to different conferences uh, as well. Um, so, you know, I'll just go to Ed on this one. You know, you're knee deep into this conference, Ed. Uh, how, what are your thoughts on, on these teams, you know, moving around and the possibility uh, of the greater Cleveland conference, maybe disbanding it in, in the not so distant future? Uh, good question. Uh, so, my, so my understanding, so first off, so Shaker Heights, they, they, they're they leaving the Greater Cleveland Conference to go to the Lake Erie League, which is a conference that they were a part of um, previously uh, before uh, the Lake Erie League, the Western Reserve Conference, and the Pioneer Conference all joined together to come to the, to join, to come up with that Northeast Ohio Conference, that big 18-team conference that was a thing for you know, a little less than a decade. Um, so, sh so Shaker Heights is going back to a, a very familiar area and the schools that they're going to play are very, are, are uh, they're closer. They don't have to travel to Elyria or come South to Brunswick, Strongsville or Medina. Uh, I think competition wise for football, it's going to line up better for them. Uh, so I, I think it's a good move for Shaker Heights. Um, this conference is one of the only conferences that I know of that is all division one schools. And that's, that's, that, that's one of the reasons why this conference is what it is. 
you're, you're not going to find division two teams here. Uh, and, and uh, as far as the landscape is concerned, so we'll talk about Illyria now. Illyria moving on after this season also fix also fits from a competition standpoint, uh, probably to where they want to go. Illyria has not been able – Illyria, for some reason, somehow beat Menor a couple of years ago. I still don't know how that happened, but they did. Um, and not many schools in the conference can say they did that. Um, but they did. Uh, but since then, uh, Josh, as you mentioned, they've had a couple of down years. And from a competition standpoint, I think it also makes sense for them to move on to where they're moving. Uh, we'll get to the, where they're moving on here in a little bit. But, um, you know, uh, the dominance that has been – displayed by mentor and then Solon for that matter. And then Euclid, you know, coach Rotsky has had, I think five straight playoff seasons since he's been there. Those three schools are very, in a football sense, they're, they're, they're top of the class. And every once in a while, a, a, a Strongsville or a Medina, uh, I won't say us yet. Uh, Cause we haven't been able to beat mentor, but uh, every so often we, we've been able to get Euclid and, we were close against Solon, but those three teams are so far and above better uh, on a consistent basis than, than everybody else. Um, you know, I, that's, that could, I think, I think that's potential reason why you may hear rumors of other schools that may want to, may want to move on. And also from a mentor, you know, from their perspective, you know, they're, they're, they're far, they're very far East. So does it really, do they really want to come out to the Brunswick's, Medina's and Strongsville's, you know, every other year um, for football, let alone all the other sports that they play in. Um, so, I mean, I, I think the state of this conference is in flux. Um, and, you know, a six team conference of all division one schools, you know, I think it's going to be tough for, for other schools, you know, for schools like Brunswick to find non-conference games. Um, we, we're, you know, as of right now, uh, we're, we're scheduled to play, uh, Avon, Olmsted Falls, Highland and Toledo wait. And, you know, in the next couple of years, you know, so Toledo wait, they're not close, you know, so that's a rough drive for all of us. Um, Avon is one of the best football s- schools going on right now. Um, but we've played them competitively in scrimmages. So we feel pretty good about that. Olmsted Falls, we have a very good connection there. Um, you know, through, uh, you know, through some coaches that are currently on the staff. So, uh, and then we're going to find that, I think we're going to play Hudson again. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll rekindle that, that game, that, that, uh, that schedule here in a little bit, you know, so those are, those are schools that are be, you know, that we're looking at adding in the next couple of years or we have added, uh, that we'll see. So, um, you know, in, in a long roundabout way, Josh, uh, the moves that, that the moves that are being made make sense. And I think the greater Cleveland conference is on borrowed time. Um, you know, just based on the landscape of all the other changes that are made, that are, that are going on. You know, what's interesting, Ed, is it, when you look at the changeover, just 2019 to 2020, you know, and even 2021 and 2022, there's a big geographical split now between in this conference and it's a chasm. When you look at Medina, Brunswick, and Strongsville, for the most part, centered very much in the southwestern part of, of, of the county map. And then you look at your Euclid, your Menors, your Solon, very much in the northeastern part. You wonder how long athletic, athletic directors are going to want. And again, when you take, fo- when you take football out of it and, and realize that these decisions are not made strictly on football. They're, not, yeah. they're made strictly on what makes sense for student athletes? Because student athletes are the one playing in these conferences. For the, for the they're the ones out on a Thursday night that these games may not start till seven. If it's a if it's a forty five minute drive without traffic, I'm at, and and you got to go anywhere near seventy one four eighty. You're 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 taking that student part, you know, a little bit for granted. You're you're having these kids. Not that it's you know traveling across the country. I get that, but at the end of the day. You put in a full day of school and the kids aren't coming back till nine, 10 o'clock at night for a basketball game or a wrestling meet or, or a, a volleyball game or something like that on a weekday. You know, it's, it's easy to kind of say on a Friday night, it's kind of a pain to drive out there, but it's not like you got to get up and go to school the next day and, and perform in school. But 
I, I, I look at this, Ed, and I, I don't see this conference lasting much more unless some, unless there's an influx, unless they just decide to go crazy and add a couple parochials or, or you know, invite in the St. Ed's and the St. Ignatius, which I don't think is going to happen. No. Um, <laughs> oh, absolutely But not. again, <laughs> you, 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 you look at it, and you're right. This is six teams. This is a league with that does that does not span – you know, we look at the Suburban League, it spans two divisions and about four regions. You know, same can be said about the Southwestern Conference. It spans, you know, really Division Two, but they're, but Berea Mid Park's at Division One. You know, the Great Lakes Conference is becoming the, the, the Suburban League Conference, so to speak, where they're spanning four divisions and a bunch of regions. So this is actually kind of a, a unicorn in the sense that it's six teams that are all Division One that are ripe for teams like an Avon or an Avon Lake or, or a Midview or somebody that wants to schedule them non-conference because with a six team schedule, now you have to add another non-conference game. Um, so, or unless you have everyone have a buy, which, you know, makes sense. So, I mean, it's, it's an opportunity, I guess, to, for other teams to kind of put their wares against a team like a Menor or, or a Solon and see what they have. I mean, how we're never going to see an Avon versus Mentor, but now we have the opportunity to see that if they decide to schedule that. Do I think that's going to happen? Probably not, simply because there's nothing to gain from Mentor and everything from Avon to gain from beating Mentor. Uh, but a team like Brunswick can certainly, like you said, take on an Avon uh, or or go out and play a Midview or go add a North Royalton, re, you know, re, renew that rivalry a little bit. There's those opportunities now for these teams. And I think it's mutually beneficial for both, for both squads. One Brunswick can maybe get some wins or, or a team like Brunswick or Strongsville can stay in the area and get some team, get some wins while still maintaining their division one status and still know they have five opportunities to get division one points in league play. Um, whereas the North Royalton can, or, or some, or another team like that can get those, division one points if they pull out a win against a division one team. I mean, it's, again, it's a theoretical basis at this point, but it's, I agree with you. I, I just don't see how this can really last beyond 2022 unless they have an infusion of some teams that are stepping up or just want to, you know, or, or more geographic. I wouldn't be shocked if maybe Solon and, and Menor uh, looked at, you know, some other maybe Akron Canton area schools that may maybe work sense geographically, um, or maybe that Lake Erie League becomes what the GLC is becoming now, and we'll get to that in a little bit, or you know what the Southwestern Conference has been for a long time. It may just be one of those super leagues, just from ge- a geographic standpoint. Speaking, uh, you know, so that that's a good, um, it's a good segue because I believe we can, I believe the Southwestern Conference is next. Is that? Is that uh, I think it's uh, yes. Great Actually, no. The, the Great Lakes Conference I put next because yeah, there's a lot of change here. And when you look at the Great Lakes Conference and the Southwestern Conference, they really kind of go hand in hand here because there's a lot of movement parts between these conferences. So we'll kick off with the Great Lakes Conference with Ed, and we'll type in Rob, and we'll all kind of give our thoughts. And then Josh can just sit there and guard my fantasy football belt and read my <laughs> caption under my under my uh i don't like it get it off it's these are facts i only i only put facts up no you don't don't worry next time i'm going to give you the detroit tigers winning percentage over the last three years and you'll be really depressed or happy one of the two probably happy yeah so the great uh <laughs> great lakes conference um so the, this is the conference that we just recently picked up uh, as part of our coverage team and it's been uh it's been a tr- great addition for us um, and we've been able to really, uh, we, we, we've been able to get out to their games, um, and, uh, and really promote the league. Um, so, uh, the bit the, the change that's going to happen here for 2021, uh, the 2021 season is Lakewood is going to join, uh, the Great Lakes Conference from the Southwestern Conference. Um, I think that's also a good move from a football competitive standpoint. Uh, they were a little outclassed in the Southwestern conference, mostly because a lot of their best T a lot of their best kids probably end up going to Ignatius or Eds, Um, you know, so that's uh, at least from a football perspective. So um, them going to the great lakes conference makes a lot of sense. Uh, There's a lot of good games here. Uh, And, and from a, uh, from a geographical standpoint, it makes sense as well. You know, so Mm -hmm. Lakewood will join uh, the great lakes conference and next for this, this coming season, um, if it were to, go through the way we, sh- the way we the way we think it will and then in 2021 and 2022 
two more schools from the Southwestern Conference are going to join the Great Lakes Conference. Westlake and North Olmstead uh, will leave the Southwestern Conference and come over to the Great Lakes Conference as well. Um, I believe um, Westlake I be- falls into the same category as Lakewood as far as their best. I, b- I believe a lot of their best players are, are plucked over from the parochial schools. Um, and we've talked about that with Coach Dan LaRocca last, before, the, before last season as well as he took over that program. Um, and, then, uh, and then North Olmstead, which I think has had pretty decent success in the, in the Southwestern Conference. They always seem to be in the conversation for the playoffs. And they always win a game that they're not favored to win. They always end up playing very tough against uh, one of the top contenders, or they play spoiler for a team that is trying to get into the playoffs, and they end up beating they end up beating them. Um, you know, so I think from um, so I, I think North Olmstead though gives himself a really good shot at here in this Great Lakes Conference for as far as getting into the upper tier of the conference standings. What we don't know yet, uh, at least I don't know this yet. Uh, maybe I'm maybe you guys can correct me. Uh, if they're going to go into a divisional format, I, I think they have to once you get those other two teams in there. Um, otherwise, you know, you're not going to it doesn't make sense that you're that certain teams are going to play each other and other teams are not. Um, so I have to think there's going to be a divisional play um, yeah, f- at- from my research. Ed, they haven't speculated. Um, they, ne- they didn't make a final decision when they accepted North Olmstead and Westlake in there. They said it's more than likely going to happen from a geographic standpoint, because you got, you know, you don't want a team like Buckeye having to travel all the way out and play, you know, Westlake or, or, or Elyria Catholic, unless you have to, but they did it this year. Um, but again, when you look at the outliers geographically, really Buckeye, where they are, where they're situated versus Elyria Catholic, those are really kind of your, the span of that map. But then you have a focal point almost with Fairview, Normandy, Valley Forge, Rocky River, Parma, and now North Olmstead, all kind of and Lakewood, all just kind of right in the center there. So yeah, while you see, while I understand a divisional sense in the way that the suburban league is going to does it and will continue to do it more than likely, I don't know that they're that they really feel that's necessary at this point. And I think they're just kind of waiting to see what what the world breaks out to. Or again, they could have updated that, and I just didn't I didn't see that when I read, when I did the research when putting this together. Well, yeah. there, I mean, I think at this point, there's not a whole lot. I mean, I think to your point, Sean, there are a lot more. I think everyone's more or less trying to figure out what's going to happen for this season and right. how they can play football. Uh, this, uh, this, the divisional aspect of this, they still have another year to get to, to figure that out. So um, I, don't, I don't think we'll see anything there, um, you know, until later in the summer. So, um, you know, I'll keep it short here from the Great Lakes Conference. I think these are all, I think these are good ads for the conference. Um, quite honestly, I didn't think the conference was going to grow as much as it did um, last year when they added Buckeye and Fairview. Um, you know, Buckeye essentially got kicked out of the Patriot, Patriot Athletic Conference um, because they were too good. Yeah. Um, and then they come back and they, I believe, and they, and they were co-champions of the, tw- of the, of the Great Lakes Conference, you know, well, so I- they've, they, they came in and they proved that, you know, it doesn't matter where they go you know, when they go to schools that are either like, like size or just a little bit bigger, they're able to compete. And, and I, they proved that last year. I agree with you. Ed. And, and you look at the potential of what 2021 and 2022 can be. I mean, that's a, that's a great looking competitive conference from top to bottom, because we saw the uh, Valley Forge and Normandy and, and those teams really take a step forward when, when they played up in competition and Buckeye, I think, the success of Buckeye and Fairview coming into that league allowed North Olmstead and Westlake and really, I mean, Lakewood was already coming anyway, because I think that was predetermined, but I think before Buckeye, this is the second phase of that uh, expansion. So I, I think, you know, this has a potential to be a really, really fun conference to follow and have a lot of interesting playoff scenarios. I mean, like I said, this spans about what four divisions now, uh, from Division Two down to I think Division Five. Five. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, Five. and 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 they're all playing one another, and they're all you know getting points, and it's going to be interesting because I think while North Olmstead is positioning themselves to be at the top tier of this league, and correct me if I'm wrong, but they're they're going to be suffering a little bit for you know those points in division. 
Um, I don't, I don't see a lot of points here unless they go up and unless these the divisions get restructured. But I think Parma or North Olmstead and Westlake are the only Division Two teams in the Parma's Parma's Division Two, Normandy's okay. Division Two. All the okay. all the Parma schools are Division Two. All right, I thought they were um, Division Three. Okay. Holy, I think Holy Names D three. Okay. Um, you know, but to your point, so, um, yeah, I see where we're, uh, I, I see the, I see where we're at with the meeting time here. So, uh, you know, that's, um, let's move on to the next conference. Um, you know, and we'll, 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 we'll get throw, going. Yeah. We'll, we'll throw it to the old Columbus Blue Jackets fan of the right. year himself. That's Mr. right. Rob Troutman and Rob, much like the Great Lakes conference, the Southwestern conference is being picked over <laughs> in the well, next couple of years. Yeah. You know, I, <laughs> I'm actually impressed that Westlake, you know, is going to the Great Lakes along with Lakewood. I thought that was a great fit for the Great Lakes Conference. Um, they haven't, they, they've struggled a little bit in the Southwestern Conference, but North Olmsted I was a little bit surprised with because I thought, you know, they always compete. Um, granted, it's, it's usually Avon, Avon Lake at the top. You have, you know, Midview sometimes. Olmsted Falls has always, you know, been at the top. Um, and Berea Mid Park is, is still trying to get there. Amherst has had some good years, so it's Amherst, Avon, Avon Lake, and Olmsted Falls um, at the top. And if you look in the 2021 season, uh, nothing for the most part will change. But in 2021, 2022, um, they add Elyria, which you know fits in this region really well. Um, they've struggled in the Greater Cleveland Conference. Um, you know, we've seen with with the t- amount of talent in that conference. Um, with players and teams, um, they've really struggled in the Greater Cleveland Conference. But I think they come to the Southwestern Conference where I think they might match up pretty well here. Um, you know, I, the Southwestern Conference is losing three teams. Um, you know, whether it's Lakewood and Westlake, which I know, you know, with other teams, sometimes you look at them and say, you know, those might be wins. They started playing a little bit better last year. I thought Lakewood had some good games, close games, um, but. You know, it, it stinks that the Southwestern Conference is losing three teams that I thought fit in the region well, but I think they'll they'll be a nice fit also um, in the Great Lakes, and they do fit in that region as well. So Elyria comes over in 2021-2022. Then you have Amherst, Avon, Avon Lake, Berea Mid Park, Elyria, Midview, North Ridgeville, and Olmstead Falls. And I tell you what, it's going to be a tough conference. I think North Ridgeville, I'm interested to see how they're going to fare uh, Midview and Berea Mid Park, they need to, to step up their games because Amherst, Avon, and Avon Lake and Olmstead Falls have really been near the top. Are one of those teams maybe going to take a back seat? Um, we'll have to wait and see what happens there. But, uh, you know, the conference loses some teams, but I thought they gained a pretty good team in Elyria there. Well, I think uh, one team that's very happy about this uh, new uh, alignment in two years, 2021-2022, is Berea Mid Park. You know, for the longest time, they were only they were the only D1 school in this conference. Mm-hmm. And now you're at the area into it. And now it's an opportunity now for them. Uh, I'm assuming they're going to have two non-conference games now. So now they're able to schedule another non-conference game uh, that could be able uh, potentially be able to give them uh, some solid points for when it comes playoff time. So they're able to really, um, if they have a successful season, keep high in the standings in division one region one so i think they're very happy with that they're looking forward to it uh, and i'm interested to see what kind of uh, scheduling is done uh, not only by them but the rest of the conference in, in a couple of years as they're able to schedule another non-conference game yeah that's a good call josh you know usually a lot of these teams have one non-conference game now um, they're able to schedule two so Maybe there'll be some really good matchups, you know, in the beginning part of the season because it seems like that's when most of these are scheduled and then they get right into conference pretty quick. So the non-conference schedule would be interesting to see here in the Southwestern Conference. I also think you're going to see, especially in probably 2021 and 2022, maybe not that, Rob, in the early – I mean, you try and schedule them all early and then get into conference play, but we see that a lot where – especially in the suburban league, just the way it's set up, um, you get a, like a non-conference game in the middle of the, of the middle of the schedule, which can break up the monotony and also can all, and can also provide a little bit of a, you know, respite that you're not, because we used to talk about the, the Southwestern conference was such a meat grinder. I mean, they had one non-conference game and a lot of times, and, and just speaking to Josh's point, Berea Midpark had to schedule a D one 
team uh, just to, you know, have an opportunity for points. And, you know, you don't win that game and then you have to start off with, say, like an Avon or an Avon Lake in conference play and you're already behind the eight ball. So, you know, it's it's one of those things where I, I agree with everybody on this. I think it's going to be benefit a lot of teams, but specifically the Division One schools, um, having Elyria in there. I wasn't sure if Elyria was going to maintain Division One status, but I just looked it up, and their 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 enrollment pretty much indicates they're going to be a Division unless a mass exodus from Elyria happens uh, to Elyria Catholic. But I don't I don't think that school can take many many more. I've been in there, but yeah, it's it's uh it's going to be interesting. I think the Southwestern Conference has become a bit more leaner and a little bit a little bit meaner because now we have a lot of teams that are traditional powerhouses. I mean, Midview is a traditional powerhouse. They haven't been in the last couple of years. Now they have an opportunity to get better. Uh, Avon, Avon Lake, Olmstead Falls have, and Amherst have really been the class of this conference. North Ridgeville always it pulls out a game they're not supposed to. Um, they're getting better. Uh, you know, when we first started doing coverage, they were one of the top teams in the Southwestern Conference, right behind Avon, Avon Lake that year. Uh, when they had did Maury McCall and, and, and I think it was Coach Durbin's first year, they, they went a playoff run. So, I mean, it's all these teams left, with the exception of O'Leary. I think O'Leary is kind of the X factor. That I don't know how they'll respond to, you know, playing the smaller schools when they've only played Division One schools. But, you know, again, just because you're going down a division doesn't mean you're going down in quality. I put Avon against a lot of these teams in the Division One, you know, and nobody wants to face them, and and we see that. I, I mean, I would say Menor probably wouldn't want to play an Avon team uh, sometimes because they're a very well coached team and they do and they do what they're doing. So I don't think the division makes all that much of a difference, but it provides an opportunity for Berea Mid Park to maybe not completely lose their playoff hopes after week two. <laughs> you know what I mean? And and have the opportunity to still be in that hunt. I mean, I know they're in it. And you have to win the games on your schedule to do that, but it allows them an opportunity to compete, and that's and that's something that they're 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 no longer hamstrung by their conference. Well, let's go to the suburban league because we only have about two minutes. But the suburban league, um... well, I, I I could be very quick in the suburban league. Uh, <laughs> nothing's changing. Um, they sure? were the prettiest girl at the dance for a lot of teams uh, that interviewed in the, uh, as as. My research indicated a lot of teams petitioned for membership in both the Suburban National and uh, American Division, uh, but they decided to stay a 15-team league. Uh, the, the only change at this point is in 2020 and 2021, Cuyahoga Falls will remain in the National Division, uh, but in 2021 and 2022, they will move over to the American Division. So essentially what will happen is the National Division will kind of take over what the American Division does uh, when they have that lone non-conference game, um, which, again, opens up teams like Hudson, uh, Stowe, Wadsworth to maybe come and play a couple of these teams that you know have now open session, that have the ability to play, um, especially in 2021 and 2022, because the fact that they will have, uh, I believe, seven teams as opposed to eight. No. Wait. He's never been great at math, folks. Not good at math. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. They have six teams. Right. He's a Tigers fan, folks. We will give him give him that. Oh, I'm missing a team. That's what it is. And he's down to less than a minute. <laughs> to your this point, Sean, <laughs> yes. Uh, Chicago, <laughs> Falls, Chicago Falls moves over to the American Division where they will potentially get bludgeoned by Highland, Aurora, Barberton, and Talmadge this time around instead of getting right. bludgeoned by Wadsworth, Stowe, and Hudson. Um, Falls did win some games last year, so I was very happy. To, being that I used to cover the Suburban League, I was very happy to see Chicago Falls get some wins this year. Um, yeah. So I hope they're I hope they're able to maintain some sort of um, – some sort of some sort of uh, success when they move over to the American Division starting next year, not 